What's up, Madden 17 gamers? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, what I want to do with you guys today is I just want to share uh, some feedback. I got a comment on one of my videos. I just want to kind of help uh, a little bit. And one of the things that they suggested was uh, a playbook breakdown. And so what I want to do uh, over the course of these next couple of videos is give you a couple of plays uh, that you can utilize from the New Orleans Saints offensive playbook. So uh, I want to show you a couple things. We're going to base this uh, defensively. We're going to try to show you how to combat cover two, uh, cross man, and different pressures that you might face. And one of my favorite formations where this, in my opinion, where this playbook starts and ends is uh, with the empty saint. Uh, it's one of my favorite formations in the entire game uh, because there's so many different things that you can do from it. Uh, so we're just going to use that real quick here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my, my roster here. I'm using the Cowboys just because they're my favorite team. Uh, you can use really anyone. Uh, but what we want to do uh, is we want to make sure that our, our best go-to receiver uh, is on the left-hand side. Um, so that's going to be Des Bryant. And then we have our back, and then we got uh, the other guys. I value uh, route running, catching traffic. Those are the kind of key things uh, that I look for. So I like to put Des Bryant on the left side. And you don't have to flip this if you don't want to. Uh, there's really no benefit to it anymore. Uh, but what we want to do, uh, the play that I want to go over today is the play Saints Deep End. It's probably the most popular play uh, from this, this uh, formation. Now, the cool part about this play um, is that it's a quick audible. So you can get it right in your quicks, Saints Deep End. Now, there's a couple of things that I suggest doing from this. Um, this play is very versatile. There's several things that you can do, uh, but there's what, what you've got to figure out, I think, uh, when, when building an offensive scheme is, number one, what are you trying to accomplish? Obviously, we're trying to score, but and, and the way to do that, I believe, is through developing what I call a power play. Uh, what a power play is, is a play that you feel comfortable with establishing. Um, and so for me, oftentimes, I think of a power play as being a concept, some type of concept that we want to apply um, that does a couple things that really, in my opinion, will shape this. So I think we have a couple of options here. So what I, what I would uh, suggest is motioning uh, Terrence Williams inside here, kind of letting him set up, uh, and then we're going to go through our hot routes. So a couple things, if we if we run this as is, you see that these tight ends are going to stay in and block and they're going to release. Now that's really, really good uh, if you're looking to get pass protection, okay? What I'm looking to do is a couple of things. So first thing I want to do is uh, I just want to score. Uh, the second thing is I want to get players open against any coverage. And so the best way that I know how to do that is through this setup right here. So what we want to do first is we want to take Jason Witt and we want to put him on a streak. Why? Because a lot of people are running cover two defenses, I've noticed. And so what you can accomplish is if someone's in a cover two defense and they go um, something like this, you can high pass lead that route to Witten and it's going to give him a nice opportunity, especially if that uh, backer, uh, which in, the, in this case is, um, let's see if I can show you here what, what, what you'll see. So this is a, a standard uh, kind of thing that you might see uh, happen. Something like this. Uh, let's see here. Linebackers are being kind of annoying. All right, so something like this, right? The nickel blitz defense that we showed uh, last time. And, and what we're going to do to combat this is we're going to put Witten on a, on a streak or a fade, whatever you feel more comfortable with. We're going to bring Williams in. We're going to put him on, um, on a slant route. Now, you can do a couple things with this slant route, actually, if you want to. Uh, the first thing you can do is you can just you can motion him in and then motion him back out and snap it. That's kind of an uh, I think that's probably the best way to go. Another thing you could do if you wanted to is just put him on the slant, motion him in, and right as he starts to set up, just snap it. It's going to put him on what I call a delay slant. We saw Skimbo do this in the Madden tournament, um, and I'm I'm finding it's actually a really unique little thing, and I think it adds a lot of value because he's going to come across. It's kind of like a last resort read. So our primary read is Cole Beasley. Uh, if they don't go with Cole Beasley, he's going to be a simple little option, little possession catch right over the middle of the field. Really simple uh, and I think really effective uh, for the offense. The second read is going to be Jason Witten. So if, if uh, Cole Beasley's taken away, that normally means Witten's going to be open. And then if Witten's not open, then we want to look to Terrence Williams coming across or Des Bryant. And, and that's where we really, in my opinion, will start seeing a lot of value in this play. Um, this post route to Des Bryant is uh, unique in a couple of avenues. The first one 
is that it does a good job in the red zone uh, because you can smart route it. The second uh, kind of component to it is um, you can high pass lead it and kind of make a user catch. I find that to be the best way. That's why I say to put your best receiver on that left-hand side. Uh, let me show you what this play does to man-to-man. -man. And that's why uh, you want to have your best route runner in Cole Beasley's position, in my opinion, uh, because it's going to help you beat man-to-man -man coverage. So he's just going to come on a little crossing route. Normally that's going to be open, and you're going to be able to get rid of that ball. Okay. Uh, occasionally they'll user defend it, but the cool part about the way the play works um, is if they if they user defend the play, you're going to have uh, another option. You're going to have this little delayed slant, which is very effective uh, against really every coverage. You, it really is a phenomenal little route um, that you can utilize. I think it fits very well uh, with the uh, with the offense. You can low pass lead it, uh, kind of get it out of your hands. I just really really kind of starting to fall in love with these delayed slants. I kind of see why Skimbo uh, was utilizing those in the challenge. Um, and then also, if you want, you can always check back and see if Zeke's open, uh, you can hit him. The cool part about this, in my opinion, um, is say they run nickel blitz, uh, whatever, right? Say they run this. What we can do uh, is if we're, it, it, obviously we know they're gonna blitz us from the right. Um, so what we could do is we could leave Jason Witten in if we wanted to. It's not going to kill the play. So just kind of keep him in as a check release valve um, to get that ball out of his hands. Another thing you can do really cool uh, was when you go max protect, automatically you start block, you're start blocking two guys on the line of scrimmage, which means they're going to do a really, really good job for you. Um, and, I again, I find that post route to be almost as good as the Z spot route. So that's play number one. Uh, if you guys come back tomorrow, we'll break down play number two in this. But hopefully this video was helpful. And, uh, again, guys, uh, two things I want you to take away from this. Number one, develop a power play no matter what formation. And you want to use principles by using, using concepts that you see over time. Uh, I think that's the key to this whole deal is what you're going to find is we're going to make something very similar to what I run from the bunch. And it's because uh, we break it down by concept. So you can apply the same concept to multiple formations. Number two, um, if you guys like the video uh, and it was helpful, be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. That way you'll be able to get access to more of our content. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much.